Hey everybody, I'm here with Chris and Jimmy Houston today and we are going to, we are cooking out of their garden and Chris has made her mom's pot roast. Uh, Jimmy says he's helped with it, but yes, I, helped. I, I haven't I seen that. Pretty much did <laughs> a lot in the crock. <laughs> Is that the crock? So, <laughs> but it looks like we're going to have a cook-off. We're really not. Chris is going to make her famous okra. That's a little bit. It's a little bit different it's than not I make real it. <laughs> well, it's different, and it's Famous different. So me. she's going to teach us how, and she's going to teach us how she made her pot roast. Pat always talks about her pot roast, and so I need to learn how to make it. The only time I get pot roast is when Pat comes down here. <laughs> the only time I get peach cobbler or apple cobbler is when Mike comes here. I like your other production guy. And uh, the only time I get pancakes is when some of the grandkids is here. <laughs> but I'm glad y'all are here. So you just need to keep having guests. Yeah, you, you look like you have a lot of guests. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a good line. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm going to shut up. I can't top that one. <laughs> Let's cook. Let's cook. Okay, we're going to do the catch, clean, and cook. Uh, we caught the okra last night. I haven't cleaned it yet. And, but... We're gonna cook a roast, and it doesn't really matter what kind of roast. I usually go by size more than anything else, and since there was gonna be four of us tonight, I got a pretty nice size chuck roast. And I'm gonna cook it in a crock pot. Back in the day, whenever Jimmy's mother taught me how to fix this dish, she didn't have a crock pot. So she always cooked hers in the oven. And it really probably makes it a little bit better in the oven, but... She didn't have a pot to crock in. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, baby. I just had to throw that in. She didn't have a, a, a pot to crock in. <laughs> Your mother is going to be throwing stones at you from heaven. <laughs> from heaven. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're going to do it in the crock pot. She me likes it because it makes more gravy that way. Lots of gravy. And Colonel Sanders said that when... When somebody invented gravy that was better than carbonation. Uh, but you can put it in there whole, since we might be crunched on time today and trying to get all this cooked. I'm going to cut it up a little bit so it'll cook a little faster. And all I do is just put it in the, in the crock pot just like that. Spread it around in there. It's really, really, really simple. And... Um, Give it a little, a little dash of salt. A little salt. Salt makes hey. it better. <laughs> a little salt. And a little bit of pepper. Lots of pepper. Jimmy's mother liked lots of pepper on She her. did. She blackened her eggs, didn't uh -huh. she? And then it's so complicated to make this pot roast. And everybody always says, well, what did you do? It's just mushroom soup. Cream of the mushroom secret. Soup. And it doesn't matter what brand. Doesn't. I've got Campbell's in there. This is good value here. I don't show any favors. I use them both. And just put it in there with that meat. And I've already got the crock pot plugged in. So, I'll scrape that out. I will, uh, two big cans. Those are large cans. Two, two large cans. Makes more gravy. That's just mushroom soup. Mushroom cream of mushroom soup. Cream of mushroom soup. That's all about all that cream of mushroom soup is good for it. <laughs> I kinda agree with that. Man, it makes good gravy. Okay, I'm gonna put some water in this and just to add a little bit more liquid to it, not much. You want lots of gravy. Of course, you can always add a little bit more, but it creates its own juice too. So uh, that's all really all there is to it for right now. Now, later on, uh, a couple of hours before we're ready to eat, I'll peel some potatoes and put them up, put them in there. Makes really, really good potatoes. And- uh, What do you set that crock pot on, baby? I put it on high. On high? The crock pot on the head, medium high and low. It's high. almost like a- Church song, crock pot on high. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> and that's all we're gonna do. Good thing I don't now. drink, isn't it? 
<laughs> we're gonna add potatoes and carrots to it a little later. Potatoes, and carrots. Potatoes, carrots. I don't put onions in mine. A lot of people do, and that's just a personal preference. I love onions, but I don't like the smell of onions cooking in a roast for some reason. Good and, point. Uh, uh, that's odd because I do like onions and basically everything else. But for a roast, I don't use the onions. And that's really all there is to this stage of it. Uh, a few hours before we eat, I will add some potatoes and carrots and it'll be ready to go. So now Pat and I can go to work doing fishing videos. Y'all can go to work doing fishing videos or you can help me clean the okra. Now Pat and I can go to work doing fishing videos. <laughs> Uh, you can clean your okra. Okay, I'm gonna kind of clean this okra up and we'll wait and cut the okra we're gonna cook tonight as it gets closer to time to cook it, but I wanna soak it. But I caught a lot. I mean, they were really biting. I caught like a half a five gallon bucket full. Look at that, I caught some big ones too. I wanna sort this out because I don't want <laughs> the moisture to get to it. Um, gotta find my cutter. There's a, I think I left them in the bucket. There's a story behind this cutter that... Uh, oh, baby, tell us the story behind the cutters. I will. <laughs> I noticed last night when Simi was picking, he talked about he uses this cutter, and uh, he uses these gloves. He didn't tell you how he came about using this cutter and these gloves. And it looks like he's going to turn the camera off. <laughs> <laughs> You'll, uh, to start with, on the cutter, I ordered this off of Facebook. It, it was a baby lobber, baby lobber. And I have a hard time cutting limbs with those big loppers. So I thought, well, that might work. Cut some of the small stuff. So that was why I ordered these cutters. <coughs> Those are really baby lovers. <laughs> and then, um, a few weeks ago, you you might remember that Simi gave me a, do, a, a chore to do while he was gone on a film trip. And that was to pick the okra. Because he was going to be gone for three days. He said, the okra's going to get too big. Well, I had picked a little okra earlier, and I knew how hard it was on your hands. And I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. Kind of a storm come through and got me out of it one day. But then I finally went and I got up there and I thought, hmm, I'm not going to use that dumb knife he's been using. Dumb knife? That's and a great knife. It's a case. I had, case I, I, knives are not dumb. Actually, I had tried to get him to use these when we first <laughs> started the okra picking. And uh, he said, no, no, this knife will work. This knife will be better. So, okay. And so I thought, well, I don't want to stick my hands in that. So I got, I have a pair of their gardening gloves. He uses those rubber gloves, plastic gloves. And um, so I went up there and got the okra and it just snipped so easily. And um, so that, that's how we got started on um, using these for cutting the okra. Don't let him fool you, thank you. He figured that out. He actually turned the offer down the first time I suggested it. And uh, some of this okra is kind of dirty. My picker must have dropped it. I don't know. Sometimes okra grows dirty. I think it must. Some of this is pretty dirty. And that's really using my clippers. <laughs> my clippers. Using my clippers is actually easier than using a knife on that. Oh, like a hundred times. Like you normally do. A hundred times? times easier. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like no, 47 times. No comparison. <laughs> um, let me just zip right through there. And this will go into the deer food pan. They're not going to get very much, it doesn't look like. Oh, they will because we've got bigger ones here. And uh, I'm going to freeze some, some of what I'm cutting now. I'll cut the ones for dinner later and I'll tell you why uh, tonight. You're not going to tell me now? No, I'm not okay. going to tell you now. I'll tell okay. you later why I wait until yep. the last minute to, to cut it to cook. She thinks I'll forget it between now and then. <laughs> and uh, so far none of these have been too tough to uh, 
Can, can, can you tell us they're tough even with your cutters? Oh, yeah. You can? Listen. Is that too tough? It sounds like a tree or something is what it reminds me. Yeah, so that's too tough? Yeah. So we just, you just go cut that up for the deer. The deer yeah. gets the whole thing. Yeah. See, it's like fishing. You throw the big ones back. See, it's usually, usually these big, big ones like this will be that one. That one you could actually use. It's kind of dirty, so I'm going to put it in the deer food. Lucky deer. That one would have been okay. It's soft. But um, but anyway, that's, <clears throat> that's the way that... Uh, and I, I'm new to this freezing and cutting and all this to okra. But one thing that if you've messed with okra, you know it gets slimy when it gets wet. And I don't know, I read some books that said you coat it with cornstarch or something and, and bread it before you freeze it. And you have to spread it so it was, it won't stick together when it freezes. You been doing that? No. Well, it's probably not gonna be any good then. Well, we shall see. <laughs> well, you need to do that. Well, if you study and learn how to do something, you ought to try it. Well, somebody had to figure it out at some point in time. Well, they're probably right. Well, this is going to be my right. Okay, we're going to start with Chris's okra. Okay. Show me how you make now, it. Now, I'm not an okra expert. I always didn't really like to cook okra because most of the time it's cooked in cornmeal and cornmeal burns and makes a mess. And I shied away from it because I don't like to clean up a mess. Jimmy wasn't, won't clean up a mess, so we just didn't do okra. Well, this year we planted the garden. We have lots of okra. And uh, so I thought, well, i got to figure out something to do without the cornmeal. So I uh, figured out a way to cut it. I've been cutting it with those cutters that I showed you. And uh, I, uh, I wash it right before I bread it. And that way it washes off, drain the water off of it. Hey, you're losing some good okra. And uh, get the okra out of there. You lost some. I think we'll have plenty. <laughs> so I'm going to put it. Uh, I forgot to put the salt in. Lots of salt, lots of sugar. Lots of that salt, makes no everything sugar. good. Okay, and then I go ahead and go directly from the water bath into the flour so that it sticks really good to the okra. And I've got my oil heating over here. And How hot do you have that, babe? All the way. All the way. That's way <laughs> like 400. Because, uh, yeah, I like it, baby, all the way. Because <laughs> this, uh, this okra is going to cool it down a lot once I put it in there. So. Mm, I think somebody's trying to call us. Every phone is ringing. And so this way, I don't cook it individually. Like so much with okra, you have to cook it by the piece. I Get just, it all clumps together. Mm -hmm. And I just put it in there. It's sort of like chicken fried okra without the egg. I just read it in the flour. And it doesn't matter if it stacks up a little bit because I'm going to stir it as it's cooking. Chicken fried okra. That's why I yeah. like it. Yeah. So <laughs> it's pretty much. Yeah. That is why oh, you like it so much. All right. That one's underway, Jody. So you can get yours So that going. one's going to take a little longer. So while that one's cooking, we're going to get going on ours. I have, um, I actually am cooking, uh, I'm going to start with the green tomatoes and the squash. And I have a, a flour cornmeal mix and it's about half and half maybe a little more cornmeal. And I'm gonna season it all up and I've got an egg and milk because I've just poured some milk in. You can do a cup if you need a measurement and one egg. And then I put in, I put seasoning in both because to get the maximum flavor, it's better to season both up. And on this, on my cornmeal and flour, I just keep it in my freezer in a Ziploc baggie so that it's always available ready to, ready when I'm ready to, to fry. And I'm gonna, Add a little, I've got just a, you just add your favorite seasonings. It can be salt and pepper. I like to add a little spice to mine. I've added a little pepper and salt and Lowry's and some Cajun seasoning because I like a little heat to it. So mix it up. And mix that up. And then I'm going to, I turn this down a little bit. Let me turn it back up a little bit. I'm going to put it on about 350. Now this will all cook really fast. And uh, what 
what I'm going to do is I dredge it in the dry and then just a light coating and then the wet and then the dry again so that it sticks really well. The cornmeal. Oh, this is the corn. Oh, this is, this is the green tomatoes. We sliced everything up while the guys were out. This, I've got green tomatoes and squash and then we've got cucumbers that we're going to try frying. We saw a recipe. I've never had fried cucumbers, so we're going to give it a try. And it's soaking in, um, this is soaking in, in Mountain Dew, and we will, we'll take out the Mountain Dew in a little while, and then we, so that, that's giving it a little zing to it, a lemon-lime flavor, so any kind of lemon-lime soda. This is still, I'm, it's still not hot enough, so I'm going to wait a second. It's getting, it's starting to sizzle. You want to wait till it sizzles to put it in. And with all the different vegetables, it doesn't matter if you mix them all in there together. And the, these tomatoes, we picked uh, small ones from their garden, which I think are going to be really good and tender and, and bite size, more of appetizer size, which I think they're going to be really good by getting the smaller ones instead of the bigger ones. I'm going to sample one, Jody. <laughs> Tell me how they taste. Mmm, yummy. Okay, I, the, the crust, oops. This was all uh, lumpy, so I dumped it out and I started fresh again. And I'm getting these out and I'm gonna get the squash in. And Chris says these are good. Mm-hmm, very, very good. I have to stop and get the rest of the tomatoes out in a minute. They're ready. I can get those out. Yeah, please do. I think they, they look ready. All right. Well, I think this is done. It didn't cook up as pretty as I'd hoped it would. I had to let my grease cool down before I put it in. But I bet think it'll be edible. It will be good. It doesn't have to be pretty. It tastes good. Okay, so whenever you're, whenever you're frying this, we're almost done, but you can tell when they're done, they float, which they're starting to float, but I was trying to shut, this one isn't floating. So you can tell when they're done, like that one is floating, so you know it's done. So you can, that's a good way, to, a good indicator when they don't get real brown. So I've, I've soaked the cucumbers in this lemon lime juice, which we had Mountain Dew, so that's what I used. I would use a Sprite or something like that, Fresca, if um, otherwise. but. I put salt in them and the lemon lime juice. So these are wet with that. I'm gonna dredge them in the same, the same cornmeal and flour mixture and then the, the uh, bread, the, oh, there's one more. I missed a squash. But I'm gonna dredge, it's the same mix as I've cooked everything else in. Like I said, we've never had these, so this is gonna be something new to try. I think the lemon lime juice gives it a little tang so it'll be more like a fried pickle. You know and I thought you could actually soak these in vinegar and a salt and then fry them and then it would be like a fried pickle. That was a last minute thing to decide to try the cucumbers. Yeah. We had so Cr many cucumbers. Chris came up with this idea because we got to get rid of cucumbers. So it's like, why not try it? We may invent something new here tonight. It's got to start somewhere. Yep. I'm trying. I'm trying just one layer of of, of the uh, flour mixture because we we tasted them. The flour, the breading is really good, but you really can't taste the cucumber. So working on that. It's good. Tastes like squash. All righty, we can take the lid off this crock pot. And I, I, I had do. to leave and take care of a deer problem we had, so that's why I was gone. Didn't get to help y'all. We didn't miss you. <laughs> <laughs> You're in time to eat. You guys, you girls are so special. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's good and done. And we've got the meat. We've got some potatoes that I added this afternoon, and a few carrot, a few of uh, Melbourne's carrots, and lots of gravy. And that lots gravy. Lots of gravy. That gravy is the secret and right there. there. Everybody can get them a potato and smash it up and put some salt and pepper on it. And, and put a little butter, butter and gravy. Butter and, and gravy. gravy. We got lots of gravy. So that's what Jimmy's mom's roast looks like. All right, Jody. <laughs> well, 
We've cooked all this great food, all, everything from the garden. We tried our pickle, our cucumbers. You need to try that, Jimmy. Was it we, good? Was the, it good? They're good. All right. They're good. And, um, and her, her okra, her fried okra, and I can't wait to try it with just the, the uh, flour on it. It looks really good. Mm. And we mm. added a little health to it, nothing, something that's not fried. <laughs> and uh, Chris's, Chris's pot roast with this, I cannot wait to try this gravy. And I can't wait to get this recipe. And we've got our famous biscuits in the oven. Yes, the biscuits that go with it. I hear Those that. Those homemade biscuits you make, I don't that's know how homemade. she does it, but they're, I don't that know how is, she does it. I better check the label and see how long we're supposed to cook. <laughs> they're great. They're great. I don't know how she does it. She Pop some when they're homemade. <laughs> Anyways, this has been lots of fun. I've had a lot of fun out there at the garden and all the deer running around. This has been like a vacation today. It's been fun. Y'all be sure to, to subscribe to my channel and to like this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.